change in here. Um, so typically I'm a streamer, uh, not much of a YouTuber, but I'm going to put this video up really quickly just to showcase Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire, some of the mods that are available in this community already. Um, just a bit of a preamble, I have been having some audio issues with background sound, so you're going to hear a little bit of white noise and my voice is not going to come through as loud as I want it to, but there's not a lot I can do about it right now and uh, I just wanted to get this video out there. So. This is what we're going to do. We're going to first showcase this mod. So if you go to nexusmods.com, Pillars of Eternity 2, you're going to see a bunch of mods. There are two mods in particular that I really enjoy. I'm going to get one of them out of the way really fast because it's very simple and easy and it doesn't um, require a lot of work. So uh, let me see if I can get to it so you guys can see it. Where is it? Uh, da, 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 da. It's not, so this one that we're looking at right now, I do want to show you, but afterwards, um, let's just go to all of the mods. Top files, there we go. So um, Unity console mod is if you want to edit things yourself. So for example, if you really want to um, change the beginning stats of your companions so that they have more optimized stats for the classes that you pick for them and that way you don't have to make a full customized party you still can see all of everybody's story but your group isn't having uh, efficiency issues so that's that's pretty good I mean the game is not that difficult but this does play into two other mods uh, the next one this is one of my favorites it's a very small one but it is just uh, it just changes the look of the affliction so if we can look here um, you can see that they're colored. So constitution is yellow, dexterity is green, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the other thing that this person did is he put numbers on the affliction. So let's see, uh, for example, um, when you look at an affliction in, oh, wow, that's other languages. If you look at one of its afflictions, it'll show blue confusing because it is a uh, intelligence affliction. And the number tells you there's a little number, you can't see it probably on screen, but there's a little tiny number, almost like an integer after the picture. And that tells you what tier of affliction it is. So very much like what you see right here, where it, a rank one affliction will have plus one, well, sorry, rank one inspiration will have a little one above, a rank one affliction will have a little one below. So if it's an inspiration, it's above, it's, if it's affliction below, rank two and rank three. And then they're colored um, according to this. It just makes things a lot easier. It's not a huge difference but I, I enjoyed it and took two seconds to install so I'll go over installation in a minute too and all right so that's definitely a mod I had I don't have the unity console mod because I'm afraid to go in and edit everyone's stats um, and here okay let's skip over this one because that's that's the one we're going to talk about last here is deadly dead fire now arguably the game gets really easy at around level um, 9 to 12, depending on how strong your character is, especially if you picked a, a multi-class, two martial classes, um, or you really know the game and you optimized well and you got good gear early, etc. So Deadly Deadfire makes the game a lot harder. Uh, I did, he's got a couple optional files. Uh, I did not install all of them. I just installed the, the Deadly Deadfire. You, you get XP about 28% slower. Uh, mobs have a good anywhere between 20 and 30 percent more health and they have more defenses up to plus plus five or ten more defense above the uh, level scaling that the uh, so okay so in vanilla enemies only scale upwards to a maximum of four levels if you are level 15 and find a level five enemy he would scale up to level nine not any further this mod increases that scaling to a limit of nine so the enemy would scale up to level 14 not quite this simple with location levels, etc. but you get the idea. Named enemies, important named enemies will now scale an additional two levels above that, increased hit points by 20 to 30%, reduced experience by 28%. I really like this mod. It makes the first couple levels kind of a pain in the butt, um, but shouldn't they be? It's It, it brings the game in line with the... Um, the difficulty of the original Path of the Damned. This uh, one only works if you have the game set on Upscale All and then Veteran or Path of the Damned. So if you pick Upscale All, you'll get, uh, it'll upscale and it'll it'll start the mod. If you don't pick Upscale All, it won't start the mod. It'll be business as usual. And then last but not least, before I show you how to install these mods is, here we go, uh, 
PoE2 dead fire tweaks. Okay, so this is my favorite one and my least favorite one all at once. I'll, I'll tell you why, because he tried to rebalance the whole game. He added a new class too. He added a class, a subclass called Bard. It's an optional subclass from uh, Chanters and he created it himself, which is pretty interesting. And then look at this. There's a whole bunch of stuff for each individual class. That's, that's kind of amazing. So if we take a look here, all you to, to install, all you do is take the files. I'm going to go over this mod in a second, but I'm just going to show you installation. Manually download, and then you'll put it in your override folder, which is this, let's say, folder right here. So for me, my override folder is um, in my internal hard drive. So Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Pillars of Eternity 2, Pillars of Eternity 2, Data. Now in that folder, you might not have an override folder, but you can just make a folder and name it override. And these are all of the zipped files that I downloaded for each mod. And then I just highlighted them all and clicked extract here and they created their own folder and now they're working. So let's go over the mods that I have from Deadly Deadfire. So I've skipped some of them because some of them are overpowered. Um, some of them, I think he, the guy was very, very keen on taking, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, when you request taking requests, that's the word I'm looking for. He was very keen on taking requests. As a matter of fact, I made a request this morning and it was entered by this afternoon, which was ridiculous. Um, so I will go over the ones I should say to avoid because it'll break your game. And then I will go over the ones that I picked. So there's some small ones. These are the main files, but let's take a look. This is actually really exciting. Some of the stuff he could do as far as balancing goes. Number one from the top. Take it from the top. Uh, my God, I'm really, I'm really self-conscious about the white noise that I know is happening right now. But there's not much I can do about it yet. I'll fix it later with my. Um, it's my audio mixer. I'm not good at at the settings on it. It's a software audio mixer. Anyway, back to business as usual. Um, so with this piece of armor, this is a very specific one, Casita Samalia Legacy, whatever armor. Uh, it used to be uh, before the patch that you would gain uh, half of a deflection bonus for every point in intimidation, and then they nerfed it to half of that, so a quarter. He changed it back up to 0.35, which I think is very reasonable. Um, Cypher spell rebalancing. Oh my gosh. So, so much done here. Let's go to Cypher. I actually really like this one. I actually used it. Let's actually look at it here. Uh, this is the new stuff he did just now, just for me. It was so sweet of him. Uh, so mm, here, let's let's do it from this one at the top. Let's do it from this one because it's more detailed. So the Bard subclass, I'm not going to get into it. I have not tested it. Uh, it's got some heals and rebalancing uh, attacks as well as some chance, some primary attacks, some passives, some chance, some buffs, and some heals, which is pretty interesting. I think he did a good job just looking at it initially. But I, I don't I don't want to play with a new class. So here's the thing that I asked for this afternoon. Uh, the rebalancing of barbarians. Now, uh, if you take the accurate carnage talent, you get plus 8% accuracy on carnage instead of plus 5. And you gain 10% more carnage damage. So instead of 33% uh, carnage damage, which is what it is right now, it's 44 or 43 and then 15% larger AOE size. We all know we kind of needed that. So that was pretty cool. His uh, fire and death godlike rebalances. So um, Ashen Skin, you get six burn armor instead of only two burn armor. Battle Forged, you gain one armor every, and another plus one every eight levels after the first. So it actually scales and the damage increases. So right now it's four to eight fire damage increases 10% uh, damage scaling from each power level. It, it's five right now, so he doubled it. Death Godlike, uh, power is now activated at Bloodied instead of near death. Uh, Pallid Fate, which is where you do uh, you gain power level when you're really low, uh, now gives only plus two power level to compensate. Uh, weapon and Shield Rebalancing, improved weapon and shield style talent to also give plus one armor bonus when using a shield. That just kind of gives it in line. Uh, unlocked some cultural backgrounds uh, uh, for all classes. I didn't look at that because there's some new neat ones in there I've never seen before, like Erglon Foth of Nasitka and uh, Midwife. I know I probably mispronounced that. Okay, moving on to ones that I used. Um, priest spell rebalancing. Improved priest spells, recovery, and cast times. They're all just a little bit faster. They're really long ones, just for priests. Um, 
I would say those got like a 20% speed boost. Improved recovery times. Here we go. Slow ones went from 4.5 to 3.5. Very slow went from 6 to 4 seconds, uh, for example, in recovery time. Uh, da, 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 da. Dual wielding. I didn't get this one. I think it's a little too powerful. So if you are untrained in dual wielding, instead of getting a 30% attack speed bonus, you get zero. But if you do get dual wielding, you get 40% uh, up from 15 so what that means is that um, I wonder if that's less, actually. I wonder if that's less over time. I should look at that because, I mean, 30 plus 15 is 45, and he puts it at 40 when you take the talent. So that actually might be a bit of a nerf overall, but he might, he's not wrong in wanting to do that. Shield rebalancing, changed shield enhancements uh, to be a little bit higher. I didn't take that one. Two-handed weapon rebalancing. I thought this was really good, and I tested it, and I liked it. Improved all two-weapon uh, handed, except for quarterstaff's damage by about 20%, and added plus one penetration. Uh, this includes Firebrand, Barath's Greatsword, and other magical weapons. Improved Archibus base damage to 22 bottom end, 28 top end. Changed Savage Attack Modal Accuracy Penalty from minus 10 to only minus 7 accuracy and added a plus 1 penetration bonus. That's the um, that's the attack modal for Greatswords, and I tested it. It felt a lot nicer to get that extra 3 accuracy back. Gave Archibus Aim Shot an extra plus 10 damage bonus. So that's the modal for Archibus. Am I saying it right? Is it, is it Archibus or Archibus? Uh, improved two-handed style to also give 10% recovery bonus on all two-handed weapons, melee, and ranged. Mm, I think that was necessary too, because dual wielding is just too fast compared to two-handed. So this was really good. I definitely used it. I liked it. Uh, do, I did not use his Path of the Damn difficulty tweaks because he actually made it easier, and I wanted the game harder, as I did with Deadly Deadfire. Cypher spells rebalancing. This was really important. So the spells went way down in uh, speed, and he gave another 10% to Biting Whip. So he gave another 10% to Biting Whip across the board. Casting speed changed to 1.5 seconds. Recovering speed changed to 2.0 seconds on most spells. Um, Cyphers needed that, man. That, 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 they are really down in the dumps right now as far as casters. So being the fastest uh, aggressive caster next, next to maybe Wizards, I, I think that was a really good idea. I used it, and I liked it. He also changed Soul Blade to work on ranged. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. I didn't touch it. Fighter rebalancing. Um, he, I, di I didn't touch it, so I'm not going to go over it. Ranger rebalancing was really, really good. Oh my god, he did such a great, great job. I want to show you the ranger. Uh, actually, let's see. Can I? Can I? Um, let's, um, did I make a ranger? What character is this? I want to show you. No, this guy is. What is he? A cipher bar. Oh, he's just straight up rogue. Yeah, rogue cipher. Rogue cipher. Uh, so let's save and take a quick look. I know you can't see everything uh, on screen. I haven't uh, resized it. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Again, do I have a ranger I can show you? Uh, I don't have a leveled ranger I can show you really quick, so why don't we um, take a quick moment to make one while I'm going over the rest of that stuff. Hopefully she's not going to talk to me. She's not going to talk. Let's mute her. I've restarted in this game so many times that's probably <laughs> it's probably a good idea to... Oh, yeah. Uh, volume mixer. New Pillars of Eternity. Let's go with new game. Uh, yeah, so I usually get the money, the levels, and then go to all, level scaling, and pick Path of the Damned. Then you know um, the Deadly Deadfire, the really high difficulty mod is enabled. So while we're looking at that, let's go back to our, let's go back to the screen. Okay, so the Ranger rebalancing. Um, reduce the bond cost by a, one across the board. There are still some really high-end stuff that are that are two and three, but a lot of things have dropped down to one and two. Uh, improved th he, he, the thorn damage. So the base, the, the base level thorn actually has some thorn damage, and the second level thorn has m even more damage. Wounding shot. He doubled the proc on that. The dot it does not do the damage that it's supposed to do. Uh, for example, if you 
Oh God, I've done this so many times. Um, if you um, if you look at the dot from wounding shot, it makes it look like you would do about um, 20% per tick, and there's two ticks. So you'd think you'd get 40% extra damage, but it's 40% base weapon damage, so it's really low. Like I would get I would get ticks of like six and seven. So he doubled that. Um, reduced casting and recovery time for pet heals and thorns. That's pretty exam uh, makes sense. Improved evasive roll and fire duration to 20 seconds. Now, what he means by that is the nimble that you get at the end. He, he increased it to 20 seconds to make it worthwhile. Improved concussive shots, and it's upgrade by adding penetration to both and a damage bonus only to the upgrade. I think it's about 20% damage bonus, so it's a full attack plus 20%. Uh, resilient companion scales. Thank you. I don't know why this is not in the game. So the, compa the, the ranger companion actually scales. It gets plus one armor rating every eight levels and plus two max health every level. Vicious companion scales at plus 5% every five levels and plus one penetration every 12 levels, I guess. So... I don't know if that means that you just get plus one because you're never going to get to the 24th level. Maybe you get to plus 1.8 or something like that. Change pet attack recovery to fast, three seconds, and attack speed to fast, 0.5 seconds. Uh, changed pet damages to bird is uh, 8 to 12 with 7 penetration slash damage unaltered. Uh, the bear is 8 to 24 with 6 penetration. Uh, slash and pierce and the attack recovery is slower so 4.5 because he put the bear higher than the wolf the wolf is uh 13 to 19 with six penetration but it's faster it's back to that 3.0 seconds so um 33 faster and then the other pets are 10 to 14 with six penetration slash and pierce um, and then he rebalanced some spells so he added lesser insect swarm which is does three raw damage per three seconds and immune to concentration for 30 seconds 1.5 meter radius nature's heal 1.5 meter aoe 20 health uh, the heal only works does not work by the way if you go ghost hunter you can't use that heal because ghost hunter doesn't have fire slice. bam through this real fast wham i just want you to see what the tree looks like um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This video is going a little longer than I expected. I actually didn't know that I would be so excited to showcase this stuff. But uh, okay, so Ranger preview tree. So look at look at all this. Look at all these goodies. So you got the heal that you, can, you can't use this heal if you're um, Ghost Heart. Uh, you got a small AOE heal. You've got twenty percent actual concussive damage on um, concussive shot. He added an explosive arrow with a 25 to 40 at, at power level 6. That's not a huge amount of damage with 1.5 meter radius. That's really cool. Added some damage to the base thorns, 19 to 27 slash. And added more damage, 38 to 54. That is much more in line. Slash or pierce and immobilized. Um, for this power level? Yeah, like, come on. Um, here, look at that. That's that new mod I told you about. The afflictions. Uh, what else did he change? He also added uh, some type of writhing tentacle and then a earlier version of twin arrows called double shot. It's actually not too overpowered because it's two shots but at minus 25% damage of primary attack. And, uh, and I think that's about it. So let's go back to back to here so y'all can see. Uh, was there anything else? Yeah, um, he made an optional stalker challenge to uh, change that the, um, the the bonding grief doesn't happen until 12 meters. I haven't touched that. He did a sharpshooter, a really good sharpshooter rebalance. Uh, bonus hit to crit conversion when attacking targets greater than 4 meters away. Bonus penetration when attacking targets more than 4 meters away. Reduced the deflection penalty to minus 5. Very good. Uh, added plus three ranged accuracy bonus, minus three melee accuracy bonus. Makes sense. I like it. Added a plus 10% range damage bonus and improved the range of all ranged weapons, uh, which is really good. They, the, the sharpshooter does. Uh, I haven't touched it. The I don't play a sharpshooter. Also, he added the an option to do sharpshooter ghost heart if you really don't want to have your pet, especially with all those new talents he added. I mean, you may not want to do a pet. You might want to play with all the new talents. Um, let's see, Rogue Rebalance, he just dropped a couple costs. Uh, Shadowing Beyond is now two instead of three, which is a huge, huge deal. Uh, let's take a closer look so you can see. Let's go back to Rogue. Um, 
So if you look at the rogue tree, shadowing beyond is two guile. Uh, it's not overpowered. Enduring shadow is two. Uh, Flurry of blades is two. Uh, toxic strike, penetrating strike, and withered strike are two. No one even takes these because the cost is three. Same thing. Oh wow, pernicious cloud. These guys are only one. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, they're never touched, so it's probably a good idea. Sap is one, and guile is one. Now he wasn't stupid. He didn't change gambit, and he kept um, vanishing strike up there too. And and he added gunner, the reload speed to um uh to rogue which is really cool i like it i like it a lot let's see what else we got here real quick mm, uh he rebalanced the god likes to have plus two to dex and int it's an optional one if you don't want to have it i think it makes up for the lack of helmet although it might be a little bit strong with the barath's blessing at the same time and he made the moon godlike silver tide scale uh, plus three heal to every th every level. So it's a little tiny bit more health every level. It makes sense. Um, and the I think I already went over the death godlike thing earlier. But if I didn't, death godlikes, um, their passive kicks in at... Oh, yeah, I did. I said that fire and death godlike. All right, cool, cool. Uh, a lot of items have been turned into trinkets. So you can use them on many characters. I didn't touch that. That felt like it might be a little too strong. And the one that I asked for almost right away, which was the uh, the Carnage buff. So yeah, this one is PoE2 Deadfire Tweaks. And there's some really, really good stuff in here. There's some overpowered stuff that you shouldn't touch. I would, I would stay away from the Fighter Rebalance because it gives back the full attack on Charged. Um, I would stay away from the plus one power level to moon godlikes because that kind of makes nature godlikes completely obsolete. Uh, he also buffed up rapid casting to change from 10% to 25% bonus. I think that's really good, although I'm a little bit afraid of what that would do in combination with his new cypher uh, casters. I'm, I'm actually going to try it out and see if it's too strong because cyphers are already a little bit faster and with another 15% with rapid casting, that might make them like an ascendant too much of a crazy nuker. Well, that might be fun. Um... And that is about it, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm going to upload this to YouTube and uh, we'll see we'll see what people think. But I just wanted you guys to, to see what's available already for PoE2. Now, the good thing about Obsidian is that they are, excuse me while I take a sip of my coffee here. Yes, that is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Cup and yes, I've waited till 5 p.m. for my first coffee, so I am orgasming just because of coffee. I'm sorry. Such a professional streamer. Um, okay, so what was I going to say? <laughs> PoE1 became super balanced by about 3.0, and we're at 1.1 in the patch for PoE2. So hang in there, but if you want to balance it yourself, it's really easy. Now, I think I was going to show you... I think I showed you already how to extract it, but just remember, you just need to go to your data folder, which is, uh, if you, it, it's actually the instructions are right in, his his mod is not great, but the Deadly Deadfire mod has really good instructions. If there's one piece of feedback I can give him is give better instructions on how to find or make the folder. Um, but it is just the override folder in your, in your data folder for Pillars of Eternity 2, and you just extract until you get these folders. So I went with overall, one more time, I went with the Barbarian Carnage increase, the Cypher Spell Speed increase, the Deadly Deadfire 2.2 increase to make the game a lot harder, Dual Wield Rebalancing, which is actually, oh, I did actually get that. Okay, cool. So it's actually a bit of a nerf on Dual Wielding, but I think that makes sense. Um, enhanced Affliction UI, which is a different mod entirely. Uh, the Fire and Death Godlike Rebalancing so that they're passive scale. Um, and I believe this is the, uh, that's the same thing probably, uh, modal rebalancing for things like, oh, there was also a rebalance for uh, weapon and shield. If you take it, you actually gain a, a little attack speed bonus for having it. Now there's a thing with that. I'm not sure about because there is a monk called something's fist, to Totito's, <laughs> Doritos fists, um, where you can use the, um, shield as a bashing shield. And it's good for monks because it has some monk passives in it. And if you take that shield, you, it, it actually you can actually have it so you have um, dual wielding and weapon and shield passives at the same time, and it gives you the bonuses of both. So I'm a little afraid that 
the modal that gives you more attack speed for weapon and shield might might make that too fast. Um, priest spiel, spell re spiel, spell rebalancing, all of the ranger buffs, the rapid casting improvements, the recovery speed rebalancing for priests, uh, the rogue cost rebalancing, and the two-handed weapon uh, balancing, and of course, like I said, the weapon and shield rebalancing. This, with Deadly Deadfire, made the game honestly feel so much more balanced. It put Cypress back on the map. It made priests more useful. It, uh, he hasn't done druids yet, and he knows it. Uh, I'm going to talk to him about it. I think he'll do it soon. And he hasn't done the wizard subclasses yet, but he knows it. I've talked to him about it. He'll probably do it soon. It's difficult. He has to do every spell individually. Every spell individually. So this guy puts in some crazy effort. So props to... Um, let's see. What's this guy's name? Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I don't see it here. Let's see. Posts. I believe he responded to one of my posts and he was right here. Uh... Chicoden, C H E C O D E N. But like, I talked to him about uh, Carnage at 3 45 p.m. game uh, forum time, and by 4 30, 4 20 p.m., he added it. How cool is that? I just hope no one that wants a super overpowered game influences him. But anyway, all the files are individually optional, so that's great. So check it out at Nexus Mods, guys. I have nothing left to say. I ramble a ton. I am going to turn this off now. Um, this is just a stream, but I'm going to upload the video afterwards. If you want to check me out, you can check out my YouTube channel. Uh, I usually stream very consistently. I've stopped to get through Pillars of Eternity 2 because it's not a game I want to stream. And uh, I'm very obsessed with it right now. I do also play Dungeons and Dragons at least twice a month. I'm going to up that to about four to six times a month. And I do always stream my Dungeons and Dragons. You guys have a lovely day. This is quite gone gin. Um, happy to make this video. Happy to props to the people that are making the mods for Pillars of Eternity 2. I'm out. See ya. Bye-bye.